back in 2017, I was the first person to document, in YouTube blog fashion, The Wall from the 1979 Michael Jackson album, Off The Wall. I was able to find the location of The Wall by getting in touch with Mike Salisbury. He was the creative director for the album and he did all the branding. He came up with the idea of putting Michael in the tux, the white socks, and a few years later, he told Michael to wear one sequence white glove. Mike Salisbury told me the location of The Wall. And all that is in my first video, which is linked in the description. I thought the location of the wall was solved and finished until I received a comment on that video from someone who said I was close, but I was not at the correct wall. And this commenter was present that night in 1979. In fact, he took that iconic photograph. If this is confusing to you, you are not alone. I'm here with you. Let's go back down to LA and figure this out once and for all. On the night that the photograph was taken, there were three people present that night. Michael Jackson, Mike Salisbury, and Steve Harvey. Well, he goes by Stephen Harvey now. I tried to find Steve Harvey's contact information during the making of my first Off The Wall video, but every time I googled Steve Harvey or Steve Harvey Photography, this guy showed up. Which is probably why Steve Harvey the photographer started going by Stephen Harvey. This is where Mike Salisbury told me the location of the wall was. Right here specifically. And after I posted my video in 2017, I found a video of Mike Salisbury out here at the same wall. Here's that video from 2013. Mike is giving a presentation or a lecture on branding and marketing. And he goes over his time working with Michael Jackson. And he even shows a video clip of himself at the off the wall wall. The same wall that he told me about and that I went to in 2017. I also saw some articles of the Michael Jackson fan club who took a tour at Westlake Studios and they also came to this same wall. Here's that article that a Michael Jackson fan wrote in I believe 2015. They went to Westlake Studio, which I showed you in my last video, and they took them to this very same wall. And hey, check it out. There's a still frame from that video with Mike Salisbury. And since 2017, a few other videos have been made out here and social media posts and blog posts and someone even geotagged the location of the wall on Google Maps. But are we all getting our information from Mike Salisbury? Steve Harvey, the man who shot that photo that night, says we have the wrong wall. He says we're close, but it's actually further down the alleyway. And as you can see, someone has painted a very impressive Michael Jackson off the wall mural here. <clears throat> Excuse me, I get a little excited sometimes. All right, where were we? So directly across the street, this pink building right here this was Stephen Harvey's photography studio. So Michael Jackson, Mike Salisbury, and Stephen Harvey, they walked out of Stephen's studio. And according to Stephen, they went left down this alleyway by Lester Carpets. And he says that the wall was actually a wall that was part of Crossley Flowers. Now, unfortunately, there was a fire some years ago and that part of the wall is now gone. So here's where Crossley's Flowers was. You can see an original part of the building right here, the original brick. And this part must be the area that caught on fire, which butts up right next to Lester Carpet. So here's the outside of what once was Crossley's Flowers. And notice the shape of the building. The entrance is oval, it's on the corner of the block, and it has these pillars. And here are the only two photographs I could find of Crossley's Flowers. They're aerial photos from 1970. 
and you can see the shape of the building is still exactly the same, so the fire did not burn down the entire building, it only affected, unfortunately, where the off-the-wall photograph was taken. So my best guess is that the wall was just about right here. This is where the new section would have been built after the fire. And right here, this building is Lester Carpet. If you're wondering, how could this happen? How could these two men each have different walls? If you're saying, why, why? Remember, it's just human nature. It's human nature. It was one night, 40 years ago, and somebody is misremembering. So I started to analyze past comments that Mike Salisbury made about that night in 1979. So we went back, went to a photo studio, and I'm sitting there, I can't think of a way to make this work. I went out in the alley, and there's a wall and a loading dock. Did you catch that? He said there was a wall and a loading dock. In another print interview, he talks about a brick wall with a loading dock. Does this building seem like it's big enough to have a loading dock? I can't figure out who occupied this business in 1979 but this doesn't seem big enough to be described as a loading dock. Now, if you go the other way down the alley, you get to Lester Carpets that has this big bay door, which I would describe as a loading dock. Lester Carpets has been in business here at this very location since 1954. So this building and this bay door was here in 1979. Then I went back to my original email with Mike Salisbury from years ago, and I noticed something. He said that the wall was the back of a carpet store at the time. Could he be mixing up a memory of Lester Carpets with that other building? I also find it odd that in the handful of interviews that Mike Salisbury has done about that night, he always says that he left the studio and went down the alley. But to get to Mike's location, you would have to go out the studio and cross the street, and then around the side of the building. I find it odd that in all the interviews, he has never mentioned crossing the street. So I decided to reach out to Mike Salisbury again, and I asked him, is it possible that he might be misremembering that night from over 40 years ago? You got mail. And I instantly got a reply, but unfortunately it was that his mailbox is full. Mike Salisbury is now 81 years old, and I hope he's healthy, I hope he's well. I mean, the guy's a freaking legend. And I truly believe he remembers going to that other building. So, is this the wall, or is this the wall? A wall divided amongst itself cannot stand. Will the real wall please stand up? I wonder what Michael would say. I have a feeling he wouldn't care. He's got bigger things to think about. Healing the world, making it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. So what do I think? Well. I think about it like this. If you're the one behind the camera taking the photograph, you're looking through the lens, I think you might have a little bit better memory of that one day. And this wasn't Mike Salisbury's neighborhood. This was Steve Harvey's neighborhood. He operated out of the same building on the corner here for 35 years. The surrounding businesses were his neighbors. And Stephen also knew the name of the business that the wall was attached to, Crossley's Flowers. And I checked it out, Crossley's Flowers did operate out of 7819 Beverly Boulevard starting in 1966. And it looks like they gave up their lease or lost their lease in 1996. That could be the year of the fire. And in an email, Stephen Harvey told me that before the fire, he used to bring his friends out there into the alleyway and take their picture at the Michael Jackson wall. Also, Stephen remembers exactly which camera he used. It was a Hasselblad manual hand-cranked camera, I believe very similar to the one shown here. So we have Mike Salisbury's memory that it was a wall with a loading dock, and two, the wall was part of a carpet store. Or we have Stephen Harvey's memory, where he tells us that the wall was a part of the business Crossley's Flowers. He knows why the wall is no longer there because of a fire. He remembers what style of camera he used, and the biggest piece of evidence this is where Steve Harvey worked and had his studio for over three decades. He knew this block and this alley like the back of his hand. So after analyzing everything, we can say that this is the true location of where the off the wall wall was located.
pretty amazing that of the three people there that night at this photo session, I have corresponded with two of them. That blows my mind. And believe me, if Michael Jackson was alive, I would be picking his brain about where he took this photograph. I learned today from a very nice man named Omar who lives around here and who works around here that this entire block is gonna be redeveloped and they're gonna tear everything down come January. So if you wanna see this wall, if you believe this is the real wall or if you wanna see this awesome Michael Jackson mural, they're gonna start tearing it down in January. Take that with a grain of salt. I just met that guy today, but he seemed pretty credible. So this wall and this mural and this building could be gone in January, 2024. With that, I'm going to wrap up this wall adventure, put a bow on it, and it's out of my life. It's out of my life. I don't know. But first, I wanna show you guys one other thing related to off the wall. Last time I took you guys to Westlake Studios where some of Off The Wall was recorded, but the majority of it, all the vocals and a lot of the rhythm section were recorded right here at the Alan Zentz Recording Studio. Now the Alan Zentz Recording Studio, it went out of business in 1983. So I think that's why a lot of people, if they go online and read about it, they go to Westlake. But in the liner notes, it says, recorded at the Alan Zentz Studio. And there it is, rhythm tracks and the vocals recorded at Alan Zentz Studios. And check it out, Mike Salisbury gets a shout out for cover design, and Steve Harvey gets a shout out for taking the photograph. This is the studio where Michael, one day, he dressed like Charlie Chaplin, and he did all his vocals that day dressed as Charlie Chaplin. I mean, you have to remember, he was still a kid. He was having fun in there. This is actually private property, so I can't stay long, but I want to show you something pretty cool around the corner. This is the famous record plant recording studio. This is where Kanye West recorded the college dropout, late registration, and graduation. Now his 2007 hit, The Good Life, sampled Michael Jackson's PYT. I wonder if Kanye West knows that Michael Jackson was recording 30 years prior, just around the corner. All right, that's all I've got for you today. Please hit like and subscribe and let me know which wall do you think is the real wall? Is it Mike Salisbury or Steve Harvey? Which one is remembering correctly? Let me know in the comments. All right, bye.